takes a celebration every time I hear your name. I got this revelation. Hey,
And Christ is my firm foundation He's the rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus yeah. Cause He's never let me down He's faithful through generations Yes, He is and so why would he fail now? He won't. Come on, do you believe it? He won't. I still got joy in chaos. Yes, I do. I got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going under. Cause I'm not held by my own strength Cause I built my life on Jesus And He's never let me down He's faithful in every season And so why would He fail now? He won't Come on, no, no, no He won't
foundation stays true through it all center of it all Jesus at the center of it all From beginning to the end It will always be It's always been you Jesus 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 at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. And Jesus. Nothing else matters Nothing in this world will do That's so true Yes, Jesus, you're the center And everything revolves around Jesus, you're the 
of God and these are Old Testament names which is pretty special because how many of you know that our God is the same yesterday today and forever so before we get into the song we just wanted to briefly explain what some of these names mean just so we all know what it is that we're singing so the first name is Adonai which means master or Lord this name was also used interchangeably with Yahweh um, the next name is Elohim, which means supreme one or mighty one. This name was also the first name of God recorded in the Bible in Genesis 1-1, which is pretty special, just emphasizing his sovereignty. Um, the next name is El Shaddai, which means God Almighty. And that just beautifully encompasses who he is. Psalm 148, 13 says, let them praise the name of the Lord for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. The name of the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. So as we can continue to worship, let's just recognize the might and the power and the sovereignty of our Lord. God, we worship you. Lord, we stand amazed by who you are. We are in awe of you, God. We worship you. We give you all our praise. Thank you, Jesus.
what an honor, what a privilege it is to be in communion with you, to get to know you, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. So grateful, so grateful for who you are. We worship you and it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Ooh, how good was that, huh? Please take a seat. Just for a few minutes, the band's gonna come back and lead us in another song to close out tonight. But welcome to Ignite. This is our introduction to spiritual formation opportunities around campus. We get to worship every Monday morning at 11 o'clock, every Tuesday evening at 7.30, every Thursday evening, I think it's 7.30 also on Thursday nights. Somebody give me an amen on that. Yeah, thank you. We are so happy that you are here. I hope that you will uh, make this a regular part of your experience this year at GCU. Um, God has been doing some amazing things in our midst over the years, and uh, now you get to be a part of it this year. And uh, it is wonderful to stand off to the side and to see you worship, uh, to see you focus upon the Lord and, and give him this time and this space uh, to honor him in that way. Uh, the band's gonna come back in a minute and uh, uh, whenever they're finished leading us out, or before they're finished leading us out, uh, Cam and Tyson are gonna come and uh, share a word from scripture. Uh, one of the things I wanted to uh, share with you was, I hope that you paid attention to the videos. There's all kinds of opportunities for you to get involved in a spiritual way on campus and off campus. And I hope that you'll take advantage of those opportunities. I know life will get busy, you'll get involved in a lot of different things, whether it be intramural sports or club sports or clubs and organizations or big events or small events around campus. But hopefully, you will make room in your busy, busy schedule um, uh, to be involved in the things that God wants to use to shape and form you, to have an impact in the lives of others. You know, when I was thinking of tonight and thinking about you being in college, I was reminded of a story um, from a number of years ago that I experienced. Now, I grew up in Southern California, so I know traffic, I know big cities, but this particular weekend, I was in New York City. How many of you have ever been to New York City? <laughs> Whew, that is a big, big city. I was there with a friend of mine and we were serving a church in New Jersey and we had finished up that evening. Uh, it was about 10, 30, or 11 o'clock, and I was driving back to my hotel in Long Island. And as I was making my way uh, across the George Washington Bridge, I took a wrong turn. And I wasn't sure where I was, and I, I, I was completely disoriented, didn't know which highway to take, and all the streets and signs were unfamiliar to me, so I thought, Man, I better get off the highway here before I get completely lost and end up in Florida or something. So I got off the highway and I'm down in this city and um, it was a, a rough part of town. And I'm like, oh man, I don't know where I am. It's late at night and I don't know how to get to my hotel and I don't know who to ask. So I came up to this intersection, and I'm a couple cars deep at the, the red light, and I said, Lord, I'm lost. I've never felt like this before. And I said, uh, please provide a police officer. I need a, I need a, a, a squad car or a, somebody that I can talk to that can help me get back to my hotel. So the light turned green, and a couple cars in front of me went, and right in front of the car in front of me was a squad car and he turned right. I said, yes. So I turned my rental car and I followed him. Man, I was right on his bumper. And uh, I was trying to get his attention and I thought, well, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm gonna, I gotta stop this guy because I don't know what else to do. So he starts slowing down and uh, I pull up on the driver's side in my rental car and I roll down my window I didn't roll it down, I rolled it down. And uh, uh, the driver looks at me like, what are you doing and what do you want? 
and why are you here? And I said, officer, I have a hotel in Long Island and I don't know how to get back to the highway and I'm not sure which direction to go. Uh, can you give me directions? And he was a little short with me. It's like, you shouldn't be here. Uh, what are you doing? You're wasting my time. And so he starts going through his direction. You go down here, take a right, make a left, go right, turn over here, go down this street. And I'm like, and, and, and I kind of waved at him. I said, dude, I have no idea where I am right now. I don't know what street you're talking about. I don't know how to get to where you're telling me to go. And he was exasperated, as I was. So his partner, who was in the other side, leaned over and looked across the driver, and he said, pull over to the, the curb. So I rolled around in front of him, pulled on the side of the curb, and they rolled up alongside of me. So the guy in the passenger side was super patient, and he starts giving me directions on how to get back to um, the highway. I had to go through a toll booth. If you've ever been through a toll, I had to pay some money to get back on the highway. I had $10 cash in my pocket, and uh, it was a $7 toll, and he said, don't miss it because it's going to cost you a lot more than $10. Um, if you missed this particular toll. So I was getting a little bit more anxious. And he said, uh, if you get on there, as soon as you get through the toll, uh, you're going to make a, a hard left and just follow that highway and you'll find the one that will get you back to Long Island. Well, while he's giving me directions, my driver's side window, which is on the curbside, I start hearing a guy talking to me. As I'm listening to the officer, I turn over, I look over, and here's this guy leaning in my window trying to sell me crack. <laughs> and I looked at him. A police officer on this side and a drug dealer on this side. And I said, would you stop? I do not want what you're selling. Yes, officer, please go ahead. <laughs> so I got my directions. I got my toll gate or toll booth made it to the highway, and got back to my hotel. Here's the point of my story. College life can be a little bit like being lost in New York City. You're going to have times in your year where you're going to feel like, I I I'm so disordered, I don't know which direction I'm going. It may have been today. I gave directions to a lot of students how to find the mail room, Building 16. But it may go deeper than that for you this year. You may find yourself struggling in being a college student saying, I, I, man, I, I thought I had some things figured out. I don't feel like I haven't figured out now. And I'm, I feel lost. My world's starting to spin. I'm not sure what's next. You may find yourself when somebody on one side of your life is trying to give you information that will help you. And somebody on the other side who has a different interest in you. And they'll pull at you and tug at you this year. So who are you going to follow? Who's going to get you out of a scary big city? Some of you come from a city. Some of you come from a big town, a big school. Some of you come from a real small town and a small community. And man, the size of GCU, the size of tonight is a bit overwhelming. Sometimes in a good way and sometimes like, oh my word, there's so many people here, I don't know what to do. So who is going to be that voice in your life that is gonna help you cut through the noise, the busyness, the confusion, all of what comes with going off to college? My hope is, that it'll be Jesus. My hope is tonight that these songs that we've sung, some of which are familiar to you and others which aren't, have been a reminder to you that Jesus needs to be center in your life. That it's him that you have chosen to follow and tonight you need to renew that commitment to following him him this year. In the Gospel of Mark, there's a great passage of Scripture. I want to encourage you to turn your attention to the screen. I want to read it for you. 
Mark chapter eight, beginning in verse 34, it says this, and calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, if any would would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his own soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words and in this adulterous and sinful generation of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Jesus isn't messing around here. He's calling us to a huge commitment. And I wanna, ca- I wanna challenge you tonight, at the very beginning of the year, the first day of classes, to maybe reset the focus of your heart and your life and your mind upon Jesus this year. And let it start tonight, right here, before you leave this building. In the quietness of this moment, may I ask that the Spirit of God moves amongst us in ways in which we can uh, muster or facilitate or create but only God in the person of the Holy Spirit can do in our hearts and our minds. And I want to invite you tonight to think in terms of Jesus becoming the King and Lord of your life. Not necessarily just the lyrics of a song and the topic of a message but the core of who you are. It is by no mistake that you found your way to the arena tonight. No mistake. And I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you, you stood together and sang praises to, to our king. But I want us to sift through it right now and think about who we are and what we're about. And begin to think in terms of what Jesus called us to in these words. Will you decide tonight that you will live an unselfish life? That this year you will learn how to not to think about your own needs and interests, but the interest and needs of others. Let Jesus lead you to do what he does, which is that very thing. To be unashamed to be unashamed to follow Jesus in the midst of this difficult, lost world. To be unashamed to be counted amongst his people. And it's great in a place like this, but what about when you're in your room, you're standing in line for food, you're in a study hall, and the enemy enters in a way in which challenges you. And the depth of your commitment to who you believe Jesus to be in your life. And then unwaveringly, will you decide that in the midst of my generation, I will not be swayed one direction or the other, but I will follow him. He indeed is my king, and I will sing to that truth. He is my Lord and my Savior that I've trusted Will you follow him as he calls to you throughout this year, Monday through Sunday, to be his child in the midst of this world, in the middle of this campus, in the middle of your living area, in the middle of a study room, a classroom, will you be his child in a way in which he will be exalted in the midst of your life and how it's expressed? I'm praying to that that end. I'm so encouraged to see this place filled with you tonight. God is doing something amazing in the hearts of people like you. And you have given yourself to this moment this evening. And I just want to affirm you and encourage you. Follow Jesus this year. Decide tonight You're not going to let the enemy become a wedge between you and him. 
You're gonna have a strength of heart and mind that will be unique to your life. And it'll start, it'll start this evening. That is my prayer for us tonight. That is my hope for us tonight. And I'm inviting us to make that collective commitment to follow our King and our Lord. And whatever he calls on us to do this year, that we will follow him. Will you do that? Come on. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Let it start tonight. I wonder if you'd stand for a minute. I'm gonna invite the band to come back. They're gonna sing us, uh, sing us out. But before they do, Cam and Tyson, your president and vice president, is gonna lead us towards the closing of this evening. Would you welcome them? Hello, GCU. How are you guys doing tonight? Hey everyone, like Pastor Tim said, my name is Camden and I have the privilege to serve as your student body president for this academic year. And I wanted to thank all of you for coming to Ignite tonight. And before we go any further, I wanna invite everyone in this room to take out your phone. And if you guys can turn on your flashlight and raise it up like this. This symbolizes the change that we're gonna make starting right at GCU and going throughout the entire world. I'm gonna be reading from Matthew chapter five. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We had our first day of classes today. For a lot of us, this is a brand new chapter at GCU or just in our lives. And this is your time to decide if you are going to commit to Jesus and serve God's kingdom. And this is your opportunity to do that in the presence of others. During our time at GCU and throughout life, it's not gonna be easy. And so we'll have to rely on one another. And this is your opportunity to lean in to your community. Tyson's gonna pray us out. All right, everyone, let's pray. Father, we thank you that we are able to assemble here and just praise your name. As Pastor Tim said, we are encouraged that we are able to come together as a community in Christ. Father, throughout this year, we will have trials and tribulations, but I pray that each of us can lean into each other, that through the hardships, we can trust in your will and we can lean into you. I pray for those moments where we don't know where to turn, that your face looks upon us. Father, we are so thankful for you that we are able to do this. And it is in your name we pray, amen.
all the time. Amen. Thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. Um, you are dismissed, but I pray blessing and favor. Surely the goodness and mercy of God will follow you all the days of your life. Amen? Amen. Amen.